This is data on over 30,000 Pokemon card prices. Pokemon cards are a hot commodity right now. Well bro, that's your answer. Pokemon cards are outpacing sports cards. Get all in on Pokemon. We're gonna analyze these prices using econometrics to try and understand what drives Pokemon card economics. And we're gonna find a mystery. And behind that mystery is going to be a hidden variable that's going to provide such an intriguing puzzle. Bro, I would heavily spend 20 to 40 hours studying Pokemon. This all started back in May 2021 when my son and I saw this viral video from YouTuber Leonhart. I can't believe it! Oh my gosh! My son loves Pokemon and he was just blown away that there was a card worth more than $50,000. And he immediately asked me, Dad, why is the price so high? And those are the words that every economist parent wants to hear their children ask. So of course I had to have the supply and demand talk with him so that way he could understand these forces that govern the world. But I wanted to get a little bit more into it. Rather than just talk about supply and demand abstractly, I thought, could we go in and explore economics using Pokemon cards? This is my Pokemon card expert, consultant, and research assistant for this video. This is my son. This kid is obsessed with Pokemon. Of course, he has pages and pages full of Pokemon cards, but he's also decorated his room. He builds them. He has the plush toys. And when we wouldn't let him download Pokemon Go, he decided to create his own own paper-based version for him to go around and collect these Pokemon. He is the man for this job. So I gave him a little whiteboard with a y-axis that said price and then on the x-axis I let him choose the things that he thought affected Pokemon card prices. So he picked two hypotheses for us to test. First, he had a prediction on the rarity of the card. You have common, uncommon, and rare, and he said that price was gonna increase as you went up. Common would be the cheapest, rare would be the most expensive. And then because he plays Pokemon cards and he's really invested in making sure he has the best Pokemon, he also made a prediction that the higher the HP the Pokemon, that is the higher their health, the more expensive that card would be. Of course, we don't wanna just sit here and hype hypothesize about these things, we want to test these hypotheses with data. So I set him to work and had him start collecting data on Pokemon cards so we could actually test these hypotheses. The problem is it's gonna take him a long time to handwrite all this data. So instead I decided to write a little robot that would go out there and scrape the data for me. And within hours we had data on over 5,000 Pokemon cards and various prices associated with them and a robot replaced my son's job. Sorry, Andrew Yang. We are at an inflection point where AI is about to reach a point that will displace many, many millions of workers. Now that we have the data, let's see how well my son's predictions hold. He predicted that prices would go up the rarer the card is. The lowest would be for the common cards and the highest would be for the rare cards. And he's mostly right. There's not as big of a gap between the common and the uncommon as he thought, but there's definitely a gap between rare and common and uncommon. So rare cards have a premium on them, which makes sense, right? This is economics. The scarcer something is, the higher the price. So he got his first prediction pretty good and then he made a second prediction about HP. Now he really likes playing this game like as the actual card game. So he cares about HP. He wants to know if his Pokemon is going to survive in a battle. So he says HP, you know, as you get more HP on a Pokemon, you're going to get a higher price. His prediction holds that lower health Pokemon have lower prices and high health Pokemon have high prices. There is demand for the higher health Pokemon. So again, he is two for two on this. I'm pretty proud of him. This is my son, he's an economist, this is great. But we wanna make sure that we understand the true relationship between these variables and prices because there's something that he didn't account for. And that's the fact that rare Pokemon tend to have higher HP. In fact, you can see that in this graph right here. I'm just showing you common, uncommon, and rare, and what the average HP for each of those is. And you can see that it is increasing. The rarer the Pokemon, the higher the HP. So there is a correlation between the HP of a Pokemon and its rarity. So 
are prices increasing because they're rarer or are they increasing because there's this HP effect? Like what are the two different effects? Well, fortunately with econometrics, we can actually disentangle these two effects. I'm gonna use a regression to look at all the cards, look at which ones are common, uncommon and rare. I'm just gonna take out the average effect on prices for each of those. And that's gonna leave over some part that hasn't been explained yet. And so then we're gonna use that part that hasn't been explained yet and we're gonna look at the relationship with HP and something mysterious comes out. The relationship between HP and price, once you take out rarity, is actually negative. When I saw this, it was, it was weird. I was like, whoa, what is going on here? Did I make a mistake? What is happening? Why would there be a negative relationship between HP and price? It doesn't make sense to me. And so I thought about it for a little bit. And then I remembered some of the cards that my son has gotten recently and I compared them mentally to the cards I got back in the day. Cause you know, that Charizard, that $50,000 Charizard, that was a big deal. And that thing had 120 HP. And nowadays I look at the cards my son gets and he's getting some cards I think that are up to like 250 HP. It's ridiculous the overpowered Pokemon that he's getting nowadays. And I wondered, maybe Pokemon today have higher HP than they did in the past. Well, that's something really easy to check. I just looked at the year each of these cards came out and I plotted it with HP and there is a huge positive relationship right here. This is HP inflation, right? Over the years, I think to get people engaged in these cards, you have to get higher and higher HP for them. Like. This is like a weird example of inflation, but it's also really fascinating. But why does this generate a negative relationship between HP and price after we take account rarity? Well, that's because the, another part of rarity is how old the cards are, right? Those vintage cards back in like the 1990s, those are super rare today and super valuable, but they also happen to have on average lower HP. And so if you take into account the fact that the low HP Pokemon also happen to be older Pokemon and the older Pokemon happen to be worth more, you could actually get that negative relationship between price and HP. So we can actually do the same thing as we did with the rarity of the card. We can take out the effect of the age of the car and see what's left over to explain. And then we can compare that leftover part to HP. And this again is where another super interesting fact comes up and that is there is no relationship between HP and price. It is a flat line. Apparently people are not looking at the HP of a Pokemon when they're trying to buy cards. And I guess this makes sense. Most people when they're buying these cards are not going for the battle potential of them. They're going for the collector value and collectors probably aren't gonna care about HP. They care about other factors of supply and demand like the rarity of the card and how old the card is. I bought the Charizard Hollow because I look at it like a Jackson Pollock or an yeah. Andy Warhol. I thought maybe there would be a relationship between HP and the lowest price that you see here. Like people trying to do bargain hunting and they're gonna pay a little bit more to get those high HP Pokemon because they're gonna use them in a Pokemon card game. But there's still no relationship when you look at the low prices either. So this is such a good example of the hidden variables behind things. I talked about this with college admissions. I'll link that up here. But if you look at the relationship between HP and price, it looks like people want higher HP Pokemon, but really higher HP Pokemon have a rare aspect to them. So you take that out. Well, once you take that out, there's a negative relationship and it turns out there's another hidden variable. This is why econometrics and thinking through these things is so cool and interesting for trying to tease out what the real effects of these factors are. And once you take account of all these things, it turns out, Unlike my son, most people don't care about the HP of the Pokemon when they're trying to buy it. About a year ago, I did a similar analysis trying to understand why certain Pokemon were included in Pokemon Sword and Shield and others were excluded. If you're interested in checking out that, you should go check out the video up there. I also have tons of other things where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. So go ahead and check out that playlist right there and be sure to subscribe so that way you can join this community. We'll see you next time.